In today's show, we're going to recap all of the action from Sunday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So here we are to talk about 11 games. In the NBA on Sunday, let's get to some news first, though. Not much to talk about here. Um, some updates for tomorrow. DeAndre Ayton and Jay Crowder are out for Phoenix. So fire up your Bismack Biombos, JaVale McGee, Cameron Johnson. Big value for all of those guys. While Grayson Allen, we got the result of his suspension. <clears throat> he will be out for one game, which I think I talked about this on the live stream today. It's sort of what you expect. Yeah, the NBA is very lenient with punishments and with suspensions. He was never really going to get any more than that. He got the one. That's it. We're done. Like, move on. Like, it's unfortunate. Of course, the Caruso is out for as long as he is, but Allen was never going to get six to eight weeks worth of suspension. That's just not how the NBA operates. Even though I may have criticisms with how they handle their suspensions at times, it is what it is, and that is how um, they, they deal with it. And Allen was always only going to get one game, and uh, yeah, there it is. It's done. Not much other news. We've spoken about on the other shows about the Brogdon situation. We've spoken about... Yeah, Sabonis being out and what to do there on the waiver Wire show earlier today. So let's just go through these 11 games because there is a ton to talk about. The first game, the early game, the Clippers and the Knicks was that first game. <clears throat> big win for the Knicks. And by big, I mean um, big for them to be able to get that victory. Wasn't The margin wasn't particularly huge. 110 to 102, they get the victory for the Clippers. Just, I don't know, man, just a mess again. So many wing players. 18 minutes for the Farmers Union, Amir Coffey. Drop him. Like with the amount of guys they got in that mix there, there's just too many guys um, to be consistent 12-team league players. Like you can go and add Luke Kennard, who had 14-5-3 and three with four triples. That's fine. But <clears throat> he might play 24 minutes next game and have eight points. They're just going to be all over the shop. Kennard, Mann, Batum, Bledsoe, Coffey. Throw Morris into the mix. Throw BJ Boston into the mix. The return of Paul George. There's too many guys there to have consistent value. Yeah, it's great. Canard looked great. Coffee looked great last week. Someone else might look great in another game. They're just streamy type guys. Reggie Jackson was struggling um, you know, a week or so ago, but turning it up here. 26 points, four triples, five assists and a steal. We know he would definitely have a cold streak coming up. If you could sell high, you sell high. And a big game from Ivica Zubac. 29 minutes, 17, 14, three blocks. Really turned it on the last couple. And disappointingly to see under four minutes for Isaiah Hartenstein while Ibaka played 15 minutes. The three center rotations, they're constantly a pain in our ass for a fantasy point of view. You can't hold Hartenstein through these games. We need him to establish as a 20-minute-a-night guy. And it's just not going to happen. Keep an eye on BJ Boston. He had 13 points in 24 minutes. But with him getting 24 and Mann getting 25 and Coffee 18 and Bledsoe 15, it's hard. I would also hold uh, Marcus Morris, even though I don't think he's very good. He had four points on nine shots, missed all nine of his shots, played 24 minutes. But he will be better than this. He's not great, but he th I think he should still be a 12-team league player. Rowan Barrett was great, 56 fantasy points, 28, 14, and 6. Shot poorly, but took a ton of them. 24 shots, that's a lot, man. 38% is not good, but good to get rebounds up, good to get the assists up, and go 7 of 7 from the line. He's on a hot streak, that's great. Use him when he's on that hot streak, but then... There will be a, a cool-off coming at some point, I'm assuming. The Double Royal had 24-9-5. and five. Julius Randle, one of his better games. And with Kemba Walker out, they started Alec Burks. He had 10-3-4, and four, but there's no reliability in that. We can't trust that Alec Burks is going to start any game, really, let alone be a consistent starter and consistent producer. It's going to be all over the shop. Mitch Robinson hurt his ankle, and that meant that we got 26 minutes of Nerlens Noel. 8-7 and seven with three steals and a block. Now, I don't trust Noel for a single second. But if Robinson misses time and Noel plays 26 minutes, then he's a clear 12-team guy. Stream him, add him. Let's see where it goes. They play tomorrow, the Knicks. So let's see where that goes. Fournier had four, uh, what do you have, sorry? Uh, yeah, 14 points in 28 minutes. Like, yeah. Quickly had eight points. And Cam Reddish played five minutes with two points. I do not believe 
Caden Reddish is a 12-team league player. I've said this a lot of times. And carving out 27 minutes out of nowhere in this rotation was always going to be a tough thing to do. Again, for a bloke who's not that good. I would not bother holding um, Cam Reddish in 12-team leagues. I, I just don't believe in him that way as a player. The Celtics, they smashed the Wizards 116-87. Tatum was amazing. 51-10 and 10 with nine threes and seven assists. Shot 64%. We know he'd been struggling. This is sick. This is awesome. 73 fantasy points. He is, despite the struggles, the 19th ranked player this season. And if you're punting field goals, he's a first-round sort of player. The Rock DJ had 8-8 eight and eight with two blocks. Robbie Williams, good numbers for him. While well, Al Horford played actually 35 minutes. They went away from the three big man rotation. We got three minutes of Ennis Freedom towards the end. But Horford's minutes went up. He just didn't do anything with him. I think he's a very soft 12-team hold. Dennis Schroeder is not. Marcus Smart's back, so Schroeder goes. See you later. 22 minutes, seven points. Barely crossed over with Smart at all. 22 minute back, a point guard's not worth rostering in 12 teams. Marcus Smart, 11, 4, and 6, and 4 steals in his first game back. While uh, Jalen Brown struggled a little bit. JB, you've done it again. 18 points on 18 shots with 10 rebounds. But again, the 10 boards, the four threes are pretty good. Everything else was a little bit underwhelming there for Jalen Brown. For the Wizards, just shocking rotation management. Running a 12-man rotation is never going to work. Running a three-center rotation is never going to work. Wes Unseld needs to make hard calls. He needs to make hard decisions. Or Tommy Shepard needs to trade people. Harold played seven minutes. That's cool. We've been playing like 23 a night. So the predictability of this for fantasy is bullshit. There's no way of being able to do it. Harold is the guy that I'd be getting rid of if I was them. I don't value him as a player particularly, and he's not a part of their future, I don't think. Three points in seven minutes. Is that a drop? Like maybe. Probably. Tom Bryant played 22 minutes, but he could easily play 14 next game. 11 and four, two steals, a block, and two threes. He's an excellent fantasy line, and no one has ever doubted Thomas Bryant's ability to be fantasy relevant and put up fantasy stats. My issue with him is he's a bad defender and getting enough minutes to be consistently relevant. He got him here, but like, is, does it make sense to play Dan Gaff at 11 minutes and Harold 17? Is that going to be what they do every game? I would suggest no. We've been waiting for a Kyle Kuzma cool-off. 12 and seven in 24 minutes. I don't think 24 minutes is the realistic expectation rest of the season, but those 34-minute nights or 38-minute nights when he was getting, you know, uh, yeah, 26 and 20 were obviously bullshit and, and no way of being able to continue. He is a hold, but the numbers are dropping. I don't think you have to hold Spencer, did we? I don't know. Four points? 8% shooting? 8? Zero, 08? Four points? Five assists? Two blocks? That's a fluke. Don't worry about that. One steal? He's not a must roster. Well, Denny Avdia played 27 off the bench. Ah, that's cool. He, he cut into Kuzma's minutes, but how can I predict that? How can we project that's what's going to happen moving forward? Every day, without fail, I'll get a question. Hey, do I add Rui? And the answer, again, is literally always no. No, you don't add Rui Hachimura. He had seven and seven in 19 minutes. But the, just, just shocking rotation decisions from Wes Unseld. I was a fan of his at the start of the season. I still think he's all right, but this is some shocking, shocking rotation management for him. Um, the th you got to make a call. Three centers, see you later. Don't worry about the investment, that, the alleged investment this team has in Rui Hachimura. He's not good. You don't have to give him or gift him minutes. You, you don't have to do these things. You don't have to play Davis Bertans 12 minutes if you don't want to. Or maybe you do. Maybe the front office is making you. Just some baffling choices that are getting made here. And it's making this team a dumpster fire. I probably should talk about the only good thing for fantasy. And it wasn't even that good. Brad Beal, 19, 5, and 7 with two steals. The 19 points came on 17 shots. Like horrible efficiency. Beal remains outside the top 35 for this season. That's obviously, you know, not good, is it? Like he's just been a real, real disappointment for you know, the vast majority of this season. And that's just not ideal. But what is ideal is getting Truebill because Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions that you don't need, the ones you don't want, and the ones that you simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to help you cancel your unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Truebill has over 2 million users and helps save them over $100 million. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now. That's Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Have you had a Bilt Bar before? It tastes just like a candy bar. The sweetness is great, but it's low sugar. The taste is so high, but it's low fat. The calories, just 130 a bar. It's so low. 
and the protein's high, 17 grams of protein. This is like, you know, we're heading into a new year. We want to lose weight. We want to get ourselves in shape. So go get those sugary treats, those candy bars in your house. Piff them in the garbage. Load up on Built Bars because they are good for you. They will satisfy your craving for something sweet, but they are also just really good for you. So get your box, boxes at Built.com. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off the best tasting protein bars ever. Built Bar is built different. Trade deadline's coming up February the 10th at 3 p.m. So we've got a live show from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. over on the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. Kim Becker, John Corrales, Joshy Lloyd, and NBA veteran Antonio Daniels. We're going to be hosting it and get analysis on every blockbuster move. So subscribe to Locked On NBA YouTube and turn your notifications on so you know when we go live. Let's look at the Bulls. They were putrid in this game. Absolutely stinking. They lose to the Magic 114-95. DeRozan was good though. 41 in 38 minutes. Two steals, five rebounds, and hit his shots from the line. Also was 71 from the field. A great game. Kobe White also good. 22 points, a triple one. He is a 12-team league guy. Ayo Dusunmu. Seven and five in 40 minutes. I have been at pains to talk about Dasunmu, Dasunmu, sorry, um, this season, saying, yeah, look, the minutes are high, and but what he is doing is entirely unsustainable. He's shooting like 47 from three and 65 from two and quadrupling his assist rate. All this shit has no way of sticking. All right, you ride him, you pick him up, you see where it goes, and it hit, it crashed hard, man. This is what he has done for 85% of the season. Play good minutes and do nothing in them. Shout out Tony Snell. And it looks like Zach Levine is going to be back tomorrow. Maybe Javante Green. So I think Dasunmu's minutes are going to go from 40, which is insane, to like 28, 30, 31. And he might not be a 12-team league guy. Hold. For sure hold. Do not drop him. Because we're hitting onto a four-game Monday. Right? But yeah. These are are the concerns. Troy Brown played a lot of minutes. That's good. He was shit-ass in them though. Three, four, and two. Well, Nikola Vucevic. Is Vucevic, is Big Vucevic, Vucevic, Vucevic. Yep. Uh, bad. 13 points on 21% shooting. 13 rebounds. His shooting numbers have been so, so weird this season. He's a better shooter than this, but he is just killing you in field goal percentage, especially on a Sunday. That's pretty rough stuff. For the Magic, um, let's uh, let's look at uh, Mo Bamba first. One, two, three, four, five. He played seven minutes. He had three rebounds. That's it. He had four fouls in those minutes. That's why his minutes were down. I will maintain, and I have maintained, that when, if, perhaps, maybe, Jonathan Isaac ever appears, that it will be Bumba who loses out and not so much Carter. I stand by that. I think Carter is by far the better player. But if they play equal minutes, which I've said before, I think Bumba's a better fantasy option. But he's not a better player, and you need to get the minutes to be that better player in fantasy. And I think it's going to fall off. Well, I'm not dropping Bumba. No, no, not not a chance. No way. All right, but just be prepared that it might come. With Bumba in foul trouble, Chumura Kiki had 11 and 7, three threes, a steal, and two blocks. But him getting enough minutes the rest of the season is going to be hard to be a 12 team league guy, while this bloke just keeps wanting to hear his theme song, I guess. Twenty-three points in twenty-five minutes for Mo Wagner, with four assists and one steal. That's um, that's a good game, man. That's a really good game, and he's been putting up some okay numbers. If you're in a sixteen-team league, he's worth a look at. One hundred and forty-first over the last two weeks, but again, it just it requires so many things to happen for him to get into the mix. Robin Lopez didn't play. That's fine. There was no Gary Harris or Terence Ross in this game as well. Let's talk Franz Wagner, who had eighteen, four, and five. Pretty good game from Franz. Especially after a couple of poor ones, while Carter had 19 and 7 with three blocks. But am I burying the lead here? Jalen Suggs, look, kids, cover him. He looks fucking good. Like, he looks really fucking good. 15, 5, and 7, two steals and a block. You are going to have a lot of issues with percentages, which is weird because he was a good shooter last year. But he just does everything. Big dunk in this game, defensive stats, good assists, good rebounds. 33 minutes. Notably, Cole Anthony played 31. Suggs is an absolute must-roster player across every format. There's going to be ups and downs, but he is establishing himself as, once again, their best prospect. Um, We'll see where it goes. As for Cole Anthony, when do we start, like, really looking at it and going, maybe it was a 25-game hot streak? He's bad again. 
11 points, 31%, five assists, a triple one. Do not drop him, please. Do not drop him. But that inflated field goal percentage at the start of the season, it's crashing. And it's it's crashing hard. Like really, really big drop off from Cole. Maybe he's probably he probably is a buy low, but it is uh it's not looking particularly good at the moment, is it? Let's look at the next game. Weird one. Blazers are up huge in this game. It was like thirty to five, I think, at one point. They end up winning in the end, 114 to 105. McCullum was great, 19, 10, and 6 with two steals. Shot the ball well. Right, my um, word that maybe he doesn't play for this team again. Obviously, that's wrong because he's played. I still, I still don't know what's going to happen post trade deadline with him. Um, we already heard from Damian Lillard saying, "Hey, if this team is going to be playing for a draft pick, like I'm not coming back." And I, from what I have heard, I know they're winning some games. From what I've heard, that is the direction they're going, but that can always change. Um, Simon's 19 points, five assists, five threes. Good game, but inefficient. Well, Rob Covington had, yes, haven't had to do this for a while, but he had a Richie Benno. Two for two, two, two. He had nine points, five rebounds, and five assists as well. Keep going with Covington. Sell high until Nance comes back, I would guess. Well, Nurkic, just horrible from the line. One of five, that's stinking. 11, 11, one steal, two blocks. Nurkic put it, is putting up some really good numbers at the moment. Benny McLemore, 17 points with five threes. Nothing else. Shout out Jordan Clarkson. But some good numbers there as a streamer. But of course, when Norm Powell eventually returns, and again, I'll state this again, when players are out from personal reasons, it is not a fake thing to say they are getting traded. I hear it literally every day. Oh, maybe a trade's coming. Someone's injured. Oh, it's probably a trade. It's, it's, I think he, one of his relatives died. Like, I think that's what it is. Like, not everything is a gigantic conspiracy to orchestrate trades. When a trade happens, it just fucking happens. Like, that's what happens. Harrison Barnes got traded in the middle of a game. He didn't have to take two weeks off for personal reasons. It's not how this works. So I think we just need to get that. People are so horny for trades that anything that happens, you know, uh, this bloke gets a concussion. I think it was a trade because he was thinking too hard about trade machines. This guy um, you know, has a sprained wrist. Oh, was he signing a trade contract? Was he you know, packing moving boxes? Therefore, he's traded? People are so horny for trades. Watch our trade deadline show. Um, so yeah, most of the time, things just start out what they are apart from Jonathan Isaac's knee, but things are just, uh, they just are what they are. He's out for personal reasons. Like, leave the bloke alone. On to the Raptors. Weird game. Van Vliet had 19 points, but on 19 shots, but he had five steals, eight assists, four triples. He continues to be awesome. While Siakam had 28, eight and five, didn't hit a three, but good numbers in the wiki. 24 minutes for Chris Boucher. 11 and nine, three threes and three blocks. He is playing on court stuff much, much better. But there is going to be a squeeze. We've already seen it. He's gone from like 38 minutes down to 24 minutes with Gary Trent returning. And there is going to be probably some sort of a squeeze when the big tree, Ken Birch, comes back. But for now, he's a 12-team league guy. Um, not good nights from both Scotland Barnes and from OG Ananobi. But what about Scarves? OG. Balenciaga stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Let me rephrase that. Not good shooting nights. Uh, Ananobi had 11 points on 27%, but went eight rebounds, five assists, three steals, two blocks, which is great. Barnes had nine points on 21% shooting but had six rebounds, six assists, one steal, two blocks. That's how you keep your fantasy value going even when you're having stinking nights in terms of um, hitting shots. And, and that's the difference between them and, say, Gary Trent, who had 13 points on 28%, but tallied one assist and zero rebounds and one steal. Trent, unfortunately, is looking exactly like the guy that I thought he would in the, in the preseason and why I said, I'm not interested in drafting him for 12 team leagues. Then he came out and shot 49% and averaged three steals a game, and I looked like a complete dickhead. Like, I don't know, like... All right, cool. I got it wrong. This is what I was worried about. They would come in, he'd hit some threes, 13 points, but on 27% with literally no peripherals. Well, not literally. Literally minimal peripherals. One assist and one steal. That is it. And that is why I didn't like him as a 12-team category league guy. And he is regressing into that level pretty hard at the moment. Still hold him? Might not remain that. The big sneeze, Precious Achua. Somehow... Somehow he is rostered in like 33% of advanced 12-team leagues. Those advanced leagues need to reconsider their idea of what makes them good because he should not be rostered in any literal, literally any single 12-team league. Not even one of them. Not remotely close. He is the 268th ranked player this season, Precious Achua. And he's one of the most frustrating players to watch on the court. I just I hate watching him play. I don't know what about it. I just hate watching him. It's just so frustrating to watch him out there. But that's fine because now I can go and bet on him missing shots. I can do it a better line. You, the place that wants to wish you a new happy betting year. Continuing the march towards the playoffs. NFL playoffs were insanity today. I hope you guys enjoyed those games. BetOnline is the number one spot for you to bet on all your sports wagering action for 2022, including the championship games next weekend. 
It's a new year. It's a new updated desktop site or use the mobile site as well. But use our code locked on and get a 50% welcome match deposit bonus. From basketball to football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, or right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait and take advantage of all of the fantastic offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Lakers and Heat. I'm not going to go in too hard on the Lakers here because surely they know by now. But when you start a lineup with Trevor Ariza, Avery Bradley, and Dwight Howard, you're going to lose. And we can come out here and say that Frank Vogel's been given bad ingredients. It's a poorly constructed roster. All that's true. But he is the man electing to play Austin Reeves under nine minutes while playing Bradley 31 minutes, while playing Ariza 15 minutes and keeping Monk under 24. It is insane coaching, and it, he deserves the blame for it. They're, you're never going to win doing this shit. LeBron was great. 33-11-4. Every time, I, every time I say LeBron's the goat... It's a fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. Someone gets triggered and leaves a comment on the YouTube video. Josh, just, I'm just wondering how you could possibly think LeBron's the goat. Hey, did you not see Jordan go 6-0? and like, I'm, a, I'm aware of all the numbers. I'm aware of how everything happened. But it always triggered. I mean, even if I just slowly put it, even if I just play the sound drop, someone will always get triggered by it. Um, Russ Westbrook, playing better. 24-9-9, the triple zero hurts, but the percentages are up. The last couple of games are better from Westbrook, which is good. Avery Bradley, 15 points, four threes. I don't know how he's even been in a rotation, let alone starting and playing 24 minutes a night. He is not a good NBA player at this point. While Mallow, if you want to talk about insane roster percentages, why is he rostered in so many leagues still? 11 points, two threes, 25 minutes. Monk, eh, 24 minutes is rough, man. I don't get it. I don't. It, Malik Monk comes out, plays big minutes, plays really well. Yeah, all right, that's cool. They're actually winning some games. Oh, well, oh, so my solution to that is, Malik, can you sit down and actually play less? We're actually tanking for some reason. I don't know what we're doing, but maybe that's what we're doing. Is he a hold? I don't know. It really, as so many decisions in fantasy, it really depends who the hell are you adding for him? Like, which player are you adding? If it's a good option, it's someone who's going to have sustained value, Chris Duarte, I'd take that chance for sure. Are you adding him for Corey Joseph? Then No, what are you doing? No, that's not the move you make. But it always depends. Horton Tucker looks still out of place completely. Five points in 22 minutes. While Ariza, man, this dude's washed. He's finished. He should not be playing games, let alone starting games. Zero points in 15 minutes. Sorry, Trev, but your, your best basketball was a few years ago. And yeah, you're not there. Jim Butler, 20, 10, and 12. Two steals and a block. Poor field goals, but good overall. And then Dunk Robinson, the spur, 42 minutes. 25 points, six triples and two steals. Now remember, there's no Lowry and no Hero. So the Robinson, Vincent, Martin, Struess minutes, they're all going to get upended when we get 70 minutes of Lowry and Hero coming back. This is good from Robinson, but I don't add him. Bam at a buyer, 14, 8 and 5, a steal and a block. Solid enough numbers. That's fine. While uh, no Omer yet, 7 again. Gabe Vincent, 11 points, six assists, two steals. Poor shooting, but he's a guy you continue to roll with until... Um, until we hear um, when Lowry's back. And when Lowry's back, Vincent goes. I think that's um, I think that's as simple as that, really. As for the Winter Soldier, eight points for Max Struess in 29 minutes. A rough night from Struessy. He's not a must roster player. He's fine to have. You can have him in 12-team leagues. But this in, there's just so much of a mishmash of minutes there that it's much like the Clippers and their wings that it's going to be hard for anyone to really stand themselves out, especially when you've got three established guys in Lowry, Butler, and Hero getting the bulk of those minutes, the bulk of the time. The Hawks and the Hornets. 113 Atlanta, 91 Charlotte. Trey Young was great, 30 points with eight triples. DeAndre Hunter, also great. But he went to the locker room after a really hard foul from Kelly Oubre, hit the ground hard. 34 minutes, 20 points. He had three steals and a block, but the low rebounds again. Two rebounds and one assist. That's been a problem for Hunter. He is. Now, while Bogdanovich is out, a 12-team league guy. That may not last, but you do have him for now. Johnny Collins, probably a bit, a bit of a buy low. 8, 5, and 5. And if he does end up being traded, I find it hard to believe he'd move into a situation where his role would be less than what it currently is. Herder had 11 points with two assists. Like, again, he's fine as a 12-team guy, but he's not going to last in that, zo that zone. While Capella played 26 minutes, 7 and 8. And of course, that meant Okongwu played 16. 5 and 7, 2 blocks. You can go ahead. Unfortunately, sorry, Onyeka. Get that garbage out of here! Can't hold him while Capella's back. They're not going to play uh, Nkongwu over Capella. They're not going to play them together. He's not going to get 24 minutes to 25 minutes. You can move it all the way on. 
For the Hornets, there was no Gordon Haywood and then no Jalen McDaniels. And then we got Ubre ejected. Ubre, 12 points, by the way, in 23 minutes. I, I don't believe he's an absolute must roster 12 team league guy, as I've said. But Paul Washington Jr., 31 minutes. That's encouraging. 12 points, seven rebounds, two blocks, two threes, and 57%. Last two games, he shot really well, including from three. That just makes me completely scared he's going to go at 9% in the next game because he, he does that. Is he fine to stream him? Sure. Do I think that it's a must roster situation? Not really. Lamello had 19, 6, and 4. Bridges, 19, and 6, but no assists, which is weird. And Cody Martin's a nice steal streamer. He had actually a triple one in this game, Cody. Well, we got 17 minutes out of James Booknight. Nine points there for him. Well, Rogier, man. Oh, man. Terry Rogier. He's had these hot shooting nights, and then he just does this. Seven points on 14%. Let's hope it's not the beginning of a um, of a stretch of um, yeah poor shooting nights from Rogier. Let, let's let's hope that's not the case. Hope, hopefully, he's uh, he turns it back around. But yeah, he's had a few of those stretches uh, throughout this season. The Sixers, they went to San Antonio. They get the win, 115-109. Embiid was great again, 38-12 and 12 with six assists. A huge night there. Well, the Thick Hogs been starting to play much better. Tobias Harris, 18-11-5. And, and Maxi played 42 minutes. He's playing a lot of minutes, man. I know there's a lot of guys out. Curry, Thibel, Green, Milton. A lot of guys are out. But... I'm not really sure that we need 42 maxi minutes. 18, 4, and 6. He, of course, remains a 12-team league player. Um, Furkan Korkmaz played 37, 17 points, 3 threes, 3 assists. That's because those names are all out. Do not uh, bank on him being a long-term option at all. While Charlie Brown started and had two steals in 27 minutes. He's not even a rotation player, let's be fair. Why? Why? Are we still holding? Not we, because it's not me. Why are you, not you, not all of you, but some of you, why are you still holding Andre Drummond? What are you wait? What are we doing here? Have you, have you felt good holding on to the 163rd ranked player as a backup center all season, waiting for an Embiid injury, burning a roster spot when you've had multiple injuries and COVID issues all year? I don't. It's not worth it. People love they they love a um a, a handcuff, don't they? It just it's not. It doesn't work in fantasy, but fantasy basketball. Please, please. Get that garbage out of here. For the Spursies. Jakub Pertl, whoo, 25 and 10, four blocks, 69% shooting. Giggity. He was a handful. He was huge. DeJounte Murray, 19, 9 and 12. Big games there. And Maximum Derek White. I haven't played Maximum Derek's music for a while. I can't find it. That's why. There it is. Maximum Derek. Only 10 points, but 27% shooting. But nine assists, seven rebounds helps out a bit there. White, after such a horrible start, is the 63rd ranked player. Keldon Johnson, Keldon Johnson. 17 and 3, but he did go 71%, which is good. Unfortunately, just 63 from the line, which is another Calvin Johnson, Calvin Johnson special. And then Devin Vassell. Just play the bloke more than 20 minutes, mate. I, you can do it. 15 points, three threes. He, if he played 28 a night, he's a must roster 12 team league guy. But when's it happening? Why are we wasting 25 minutes on Lonnie Walker? 28 on Doug McDermott. You can still play both of those guys, Pop, while giving Vassell more playing time. It, it's possible. I, it's very hard to suggest holding on to Vassell when the minutes just aren't pushing up high enough. It's very tough. It's just stashable stuff. That's really it. Okay, let's look at the next game. It is the Memphis Grizzlies. They go down to the Mavericks 104-91. What did DeAnthony Melton do? Oh, would you look at that? Just, would you look at it? Would you, kids, you can't look at it because I just need you to cover your ears. He's actually fucking good. Wow. 12, 6, and 5, three steals and a block. Yeah, the shooting's a real issue, 31%. But why did it take four games of playing Zaire fucking Williams and Jarrett Culver more minutes than him to realize that we should play this guy more minutes? What is the blind spot this organization has with Melton? I don't think Melton's a great player. I don't think he's an all-star player. I don't think he'll literally ever become an all-star player. But I know that he is better than Jarrett Culver. Like, I can guarantee you that. And those rotation decisions make no sense. Is it worth adding Melton? Like, who knows what happens next game? I, I don't know what they're going to do. But yeah, it's worth it. Killian Tilly had seven points in 22 minutes. Well, Jar Morant, 35, 13, and six. A huge game from Jar. There was no Brandon Clark. And Jaron Jackson stunk. 10 points on 24%. Didn't have a block. Just an absolute turd of a game from him. I wouldn't worry too much about that. While Santi Aldama and Xavier Tillman filled in for Clark's minutes, 16 and 13 for Tillman and Aldama, respectively. Johnny Concha had the 10 boards, but shot 17%. He's worth it in 12s, but if I had Concha, I'd switch for Melton. Maybe the light's gone on and this team realizes, holy shit, let's play one of our best players. 
Um, I, I don't know that that's going to be the case. Well, Stephen Adams continues to be a rebounds only streamer. 11 boards on 25% shooting. He That's what he provides, rebounds. For the Mavericks, Doncic. Woo, that's pretty good. 37, 11, and 9. Three steals and a block. Porzingis. Only 26 minutes for KP because he fouled out. 15 and 8, but six blocks and two threes. Yeah, he's putting up some numbers. Um, after that, not much going on. 13 points for Brunson in 31 minutes. Three assists, like still a hold. Kleber had three blocks. He's a great block streamer, Muxy. Finney Smith had oh, another one. Our second one for today. Two for two, two, two. He had a Richie Benno, two steals, two threes, and two blocks for Finney Smith, who is like a 14-team league option, really. Um, Tim Hardaway, please don't need to roster him. Don't feel obliged to hold on to Tim Hardaway. Get that garbage out! And, um, yeah, same with Reggie Bullock, of course, who played just the 21 minutes. All right, let's head to the next game. The Nuggets get the win in the end over the Pistons, 117-111. Pretty close game. Let's look at Detroit. Kay Cunningham putting up some pretty good numbers. 18-5-8, a triple one, 47% shooting, good numbers. Corey Joseph started again over Killian Hayes. 18th, that, that was poorly worded for me. He started over Killian Hayes. He'd started the last couple of games, so he started again, this time over Killian Hayes. That's better, because Hayes was back. Hayes wasn't in the other games. 28 minutes, 18, 3, and 6 with two threes. He shot 78%, which won't stick. But if they're going to persist with him starting, which I fear Dwayne Casey will, there is some 12-team stream value. The big fella, Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. He had 18 points on a perfect 100% shooting. He had three boards, and if he doesn't go 100% there, it's a shit night. I said he was a drop earlier today. I'll stand by that. Um, yeah, not, nothing, nothing, too, nothing too major in terms of looking at his value there and going, wow, that's, I've changed my opinion um, altogether or, or on that. So it, it's nothing to be too, I guess, overly bullish on is, is what I'm trying to say. The depressed penis, Sadiq Bay, he's sort of just settling in now, isn't he? 11 and 7, three threes. Well, that's totally fine as your 12th best player on a 13-man roster. That's sort of what he does. Insane hot streak when everyone was out. Horrible cold streak to start the season. And now he's settling in. And this is sort of what you expect. I thought Killian's numbers were okay coming off the bench. 25 minutes, 8 points, 2 threes, 5 assists, 2 blocks. Well, that's solid enough to be a 16-team league guy. Not saying he's good, but that's solid. Hamadou Diallo, yeah, you all, you're all well aware that you drop him, surely. Get that garbage out of here! Nine points in 20 minutes. He's a streamer only, and they continue to give minutes to Rodney Magruder. For something, I don't know why. Six points in 24 minutes there for Scooter. Not much else to talk about from a Pistons point of view, but they were, they were pretty good in this game. Well, for the Nuggets, it was, of course, Big Chungus. Big, Big Chungus, Big Chungus, Big Chungus. 34, 9, and 8, two steals and a block. 90% from the line on 10 attempts. It's awesome. Barton was pretty good as well, 14, 6, and 5. There was no Jeff or Jermichael Green in this one. So that means we've got to see Demarcus Cousins. Now, he played 12 minutes and had 4 fouls and had two points on 14% shooting. There are people who legitimately think he can be a 12-team guy. You are, you are speaking out of your ass. There is no way this is going to happen, barring multiple injuries. He's probably not even a 14-team league guy, to be fair. He might not even be a 16-team league guy. Don't get your hopes up on DeMarcus Cousins. Monty Morris stunk four points on 11%, but he'd been a fringe 12-team league guy, so just hold. Aaron Gordon had 13, 4, and 3. And Austin Rivers goes from playing three minutes combined in the last four games to playing 34 minutes as a starter. He had 11 points with two steals, but we don't care about that. While well, there was no big stiffy bones Highland in this game, so Bryn Forbes got 21 minutes and had 12 points, and Zeke Naji played 17 minutes with both the greens out. 12 points for Zeke with two triples, but not... Not really much actionable stuff there for fantasy, I don't think. You solid, you solidly hold Morris. You don't add Rivers. You hold Gordon, even though he is quite up and down. The next game, the second last game of the day, the Timberwolves get the win over the Nets. 136-125. Kyrie, 30 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, and a steal. He plays one game this upcoming week. You must trade now. Actually, that's not true because there is a, a big stretch, I think, eight out of 10 games coming where he plays on the road. Uh, that's when you got to trade. When that's in, when you're in the middle of that streak, you got to trade. But he was great. 30 and 6, 5 assists. Harden, 13 points on 31% is bad, but he had 13 assists to help out. While Millsy had 21 points with five threes. And Joe Harris has had a setback in his recovery. He won't be back till post All Star, would be my guess. Um, yeah, I just don't really think that there is a, there's much chance of him being uh, yeah back or even contributing. 
Good game from Kessler Edwards, 15 points with three threes, but he's just like a 14-team league option. And Big Sharpie, 22 minutes for Dayron, 8-9 and nine with a block. Claxon is returning soon, in the next week, you'd say. But yeah, Sharp is at least providing stream value. Well, LaMarcus Aldridge, 6 points, 17 minutes, 38%. He'll have the big games, and then he has these ones. He is wildly inconsistent. He is totally fine to roster in 12-team leagues, but it's also equally understandable, say, if you're in a 10-team league or a 12-team league where you're hit with injuries, that you don't have to hold him through all this. He's not that good. I don't think you need to hold Claxton either, because there's a legitimate chance that they become another one of those teams that plays three centers with Sharp, Claxton, and Aldridge, not to mention Griffin. And that's going to completely torch any of their values. So I wouldn't be just absolutely have to have Aldridge, got to have him, got to hold through everything. For the Wolves, let's address the big thing first. Anthony Edwards got hurt towards the end. Carried into the locker room. Apparently he's fine. Good news. That's the immediate post-game response. Goose did have 21, 25 points here, four triples, four assists and two steals. So good game and looks like he's all right. Carl Anthony Towns was weirdly inefficient. 23 points, seven rebounds. But he also had a Richie Benno. Two for two, two, two. He also had two assists, 39% shooting. Vanderbilt Bar, five steals, nine boards. That is exactly why he is a must roster player. And Russell had 23, 5, and 10. Good game from him without Pat Beverly. Jaden McDaniels chipped in with 14 points in a spot start, but he's only a deeper league player. While Noel had 16 points. Yet again, outplaying Malik Beasley, who is trash. Two points in 14 minutes. Do not roster Malik Beasley. He's a streamer, and I wouldn't even bother streaming him in 12s at the moment. Noel had 16 in 22 minutes there. All right, so let's go to the last game of the night, the Jazz and the Warriors. The Warriors win it 94-92. Gobert still doesn't look like he's quite healthy, does he? 12 points, 18 boards, not much else going on there. While Rudy Gay had really good numbers, 16 points with four threes, but nothing to overreact to, I don't think. Bogdanovich had 21-8. and eight. That's what he does. Took a lot of shots, and that'll drop when Mitchell returns. And Conley played 29 minutes. That, to me, that means he won't play tomorrow. Nine points with three threes. Ingles had 10-2-5, and five, and he's at least a solid streamer, while the Basmati man. Holy shit, Royce O'Neal. Zero points. 0-4 shooting, five rebounds, one assist. Again, my, nothing changes my opinion on O'Neal. If you want to have him, fine. Stream him for tomorrow, no worries. But after that, he's not a must-roster 12-team league guy. Not much else going on. Jordy Clarkson had nine points on 23% shooting. That is obviously uh, pretty dreadful. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. For the Warriors, Otto Porter, 31 minutes, 13 and 8, three threes, three steals and a block. By the way, John Kaminga played eight minutes and had zero points. So remember remember that last week? Kaminga took over from Porter. Hey, we love him. He's great. Yeah, no. Porter, um, until Draymond comes back, you can have him. Jordan Poole with Clay Thompson out with knee soreness. Bit of a worry. They say it's not serious, but it's always a worry. 20 points, four threes, one block. When Clay plays, Poole's not worth it. When Clay's out, Poole is a great ad. It's simple as that. And Looney, while Draymond is out, has some 12-team value. 10 points in 28 minutes. Wigo had 14 points, while Steph had 13 points. Yuck. 25% shooting for Steph. Six assists. Steph is now down to the sixth-ranked player this season. He has cooled off significantly since the start of the season. The mitten, Gary Payton, elite steal streamer. That's it. Two steals for him with a block in 17 minutes. They're not really pushing his minutes Um any further, any further forward. And just as I'm recording this, report here on Rudy Gobert that he does have a strained left calf. So that's what he wasn't looking right with. And there is a potential, I would guess, that he does not play in the game tomorrow. There'll be no Mitchell, no Conley, and probably no Gobert, I'd say. The monstrous line of the night goes to Jason Tatum. No real surprise there. Your waiver wire is Corey Joseph. He started. Stream him while he's starting. Young Gun is Cade Cunningham. He looks great. And then Dud of the Night is Marcus Morris. Your top 10 players today, number one was Tatum, of course, followed by Doncic. No, followed by Jokic, then Doncic, DeRozan, Butler, Barrett, Embiid, Russell, Pirtle, and Irving. Your top 10 under 50% rostered players, Corey Joseph, short term, sure. Trim Red Kiki, eh, probably not for 12s. Mo Wagner, deeper leagues. Nasir Little. Probably 14s. Rudy Gay, deep leagues. Furkan Korkmaz, deep leagues. Nerlens Noel, I don't mind him as a 12-teamer. Killian Hayes, deep leagues. PJ Tucker, very deep leagues. And Trent Forrest for the Jazz. I didn't even mention him uh, as to what Forrest did today, but he was up there. He had nine points with four steals and a block. So yeah, I probably should have mentioned that, but it's the four steals that push him into this zone. And then your top 10 players for points leagues. Tatum, Doncic, Embiid, Jokic, Butler, Barrett, Morant, LeBron, DeRozan, and Van Vliet. That will do it for today's show, guys. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, 
Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.